Cynicism runs deep in the Middle East, and mistrust has shaped much of the bonds between societies. The lack of interstate trade and communications is among the reasons for the continued hostility. Now, however, two new mega-projects are in the work that seek to embed the rival nations in a web of commerce. Dubbed as the tracks for regional peace, and the other project being the megacity of Neom, the two initiatives seek to physically connect Israel to the Arab world and in the process normalize those ties. So let's talk about these geo-economic ventures and how they affect Arab-Israeli relations. I'm your host Shirvan and welcome to Caspian Report. Today's episode is made possible by NordVPN, which is a tool that hides your IP and reduces your digital footprint. The app is perfect for those working from home, but it works on mobile devices just as well. NordVPN is affordable and user-friendly. Just go to nordvpn.com slash CaspianReport and use the promo code CaspianReport to get a discount on the premium version. The Middle East is undergoing a historic transformation. Some walls are coming down and new doors are opening. Israel, in particular, is on the verge of normalizing its relationship with its Arab neighbors. Since its inception in 1948, Israel has had to deal with belligerents on all sides. Allies have been few and far between. The result of this status quo was conflict upon conflict. And although Israel emerged triumphant in each encounter, a single defeat could undo everything. For Israel, therefore, it was imperative to fix its relationship with its neighbors. Failure to do so would deeply harm the long-lived of the Israeli statehood. Now, after decades of futile efforts, normalization seems within reach. In August 2020, the United Arab Emirates announced a deal to open regular air travel and diplomatic communications with Israel. This was then followed by similar announcements from Bahrain, Oman, Sudan, Morocco and Saudi Arabia. Backdoor diplomatic relations already existed since 2005 and even though every Arab state has its own distinct reasons to normalize ties, there are a few overlapping considerations. First and foremost, pan-Arabism and pan-Islamism has lost influence and credibility in the Arab world. This has come at the expense of the Palestinians. For decades, the Arab world, enshrined by pan-Arabism, had granted the Palestinian leadership the ultimate veto in normalizing relations with Israel. This fixed equation gave the Palestinians extraordinary geopolitical weight. With the decline of pan-Arabism, however, the Palestinian veto expired. Bilateral ties took precedence, while multilateral or regional institutions like the Arab League declined in importance. Oman started accommodating Israeli lawmakers, Bahrain hosted Israeli business delegations, Qatar worked with Israel to supply humanitarian aid to the Gaza Strip, and Saudi Arabia acquired Israeli weapons and technologies. Another fact that enabled normalization with Israel was the advent of a proactive Iran and the Arab Spring that embellished Iranian influence. The weight of alliances is fundamental to the distribution of power. Smaller countries tend to rely on larger ones for security and prosperity, while nations of equal parity align together against common foes. No single state could contain Iran and since both the Israelis and the Arabs felt threatened, the two joined forces. This doctrine, better known as the enemy of my enemy is my friend, enabled the formation of backdoor channels for intelligence sharing, weapon deals, etc. So while Iran made political and military advances in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq and Yemen, Israel reached out to the Arab states by the Gulf. Now, while it's fair to say that the rise of Iran and the decline of pan-Arabism are essential to the normalization of Arab-Israeli ties, they are not the only factors. The potential for commercial activity is another crucial component. Not one, but two geo-economic mega-projects hold the key in understanding the changing parameters. The first is the Tracks for Regional Peace, Regional Land Bridge and Hub Initiative. Publicly announced in 2019 by Israel's Ministry of Foreign Affairs, 
and endorsed by the Trump government, the Tracks for Regional Peace intends to create a trade corridor connecting Europe with the Persian Gulf. The plan is to construct a railway from the Israeli port city of Haifa to Jordan, possibly even linking to the crossing points in the Palestinian Authority. From Jordan onwards, the railway would go southwest into Saudi Arabia, connecting with the existing north-south line. Inland ports would need to be constructed in Jordan and likely in the Saudi towns as well to handle the increase in regional trade. But from the Saudi North-South Railway, the flow of trade would go to the ports in Bahrain, Oman and the United Arab Emirates and from there connect with the broader international market. Much of the necessary infrastructure already exists. Only in Jordan and Oman additional railways would need to be constructed to link the hubs in the Mediterranean and the Persian Gulf. But the fact that much of the railway network is already operational means that the tracks for regional peace could be implemented in a relatively short time. Upon completion, the rail network would transport cargo and in the future people as well. The mega project would make trade more secure and shorter since it would bypass the security threats emanating from the Strait of Hormuz and the Strait of Bab el Mandab. However, Trade traffic via the overland railway would only become profitable somewhere by 2030. By then, Israeli analysts believe that the regional trade would grow to $250 billion going in both directions. That is an impressive sum, and it would positively contribute to the regional economies, especially in the non-oil sector. And it just so happens that each of the participating nations is working on normalizing ties with Israel. The second mega project in the works is the Saudi megacity of Neom. Situated at the entrance of the Gulf of Aqaba in the Red Sea, Neom is a make or break initiative with a price tag of $500 billion. It's about the size of Belgium and it seeks to tap into the trade that passes through the Red Sea, hence its location. But that is not all. The blueprint of the project envisions a city that hosts high-tech industries such as biotechnology, advanced manufacturing, digital services and so on. In a way, the purpose of NEOM is to reform the Saudi economy and propel the nation into the post-oil era. That explains why Crown Prince bin Salman considers NEOM as his flagship project. However, Neom also seeks to connect Saudi Arabia to Egypt and Jordan across the Straits of Tehran, which is a narrow passage between the Sinai and Arabian peninsulas. Part of the Neom blueprint is the construction of a 10 km long bridge across the Tehran Straits. The trouble is that the 1979 peace treaty between Egypt and Israel guarantees the latter's access to the Red Sea. Any infrastructure that crosses the Straits of Tehran would therefore violate Israel's rights. And Jerusalem has been quite firm in its stance towards the Straits of Tehran. So as grand as the NEOM project is, it can only be accomplished with Saudi Arabia's formal recognition of Israel. Both initiatives, the megacity Neom and the tracks for regional peace are based on two central players, Israel and Saudi Arabia. For the Israelis, normalization is key to its long-term security. And even though both projects are economic in nature, for Jerusalem it's about achieving security by pacifying anti-Israeli rhetoric through regional prosperity. After all, when people are wealthier, they have more to lose and thus tend not to get into fights so quickly. For Riyadh, meanwhile, there are additional geopolitical considerations. While the Iranians have gained ground in Lebanon, Syria, Iraq and Yemen, the Israelis have achieved some goals in Oman, Bahrain and the United Arab Emirates. By contrast, the Saudi Kingdom has lost ground in both areas. It has lost influence to Iran and by unofficially befriending Israel, the Saudis have lost credibility among Arab societies elsewhere. So Saudi Arabia is in desperate need of a win. Constructing Neom City while also transforming into a trading hub in between the Mediterranean and the Persian Gulf is surely a win that the Saudis can justify. Normalization of relations is thus tied to Saudi Arabia's geo-economic and geopolitical success. Taken together, 
Three factors contribute to the Arab-Israeli normalization process. The decline of Pan-Arabism, the advent of Iran, and the promising commercial opportunities. For government policymakers, these three factors are certainly decisive when considering relations with Israel. Having said that, one element that is beyond the control of the Arab governments is the public opinion. A poll conducted by the Arab Opinion Index in 2019-2020 showed that an overwhelming majority of the Arab societies from North Africa to the Arabian Peninsula opposed diplomatic recognition of Israel. So the economic megaprojects and the normalization effort is conducted exclusively between state officials while neglecting the popular opinion. That's like abandoning the Brexit vote and keeping the United Kingdom within the European Union irrespective of the will of the people. Public opinion implies that Israel's long-term security and normalization effort will not be achieved by solely engaging the Arab governments. The will of the public must be taken into consideration if genuine normalization is to succeed. I've been your host Shirvan from Caspian Report. If you approve of our work, please leave a like, comment and subscribe. Thank you for watching and Sahol.